Hey guys, it's Ollie from Flight Comp, and I'm going to give you a quick look at the new Fireblade 2.5. I have one on the bench here. Um, I call it a 2.5 because the fuselage has some uh, upgrades and changes over the previous uh, Fireblade 2. And we'll take a, a look at some of those changes and the quality of the kit and some of the parts and everything that it comes with. Um... First of all, take a look at the um, accessories and hardware that come with the kit. There's a molded carbon fiber servo tray. So you'd glue your servos onto this tray and then glue the tray inside the fuselage. There's two carbon um, push rods for the ailerons and attached to those are pre-bent um, brass uh, torque rods for the ailerons because this fire blade two and a half is a four servo in the fuselage design so there are no servos in the wing there's a ballast stick really nice uh, carbon throw peg and a very extensive hardware pack you get the um, um, pull cable shrink wrap for your servos carbon control horns um, ball links for the other end of the aileron uh, push rods Extra screws for everything and crimps for the um, crimps for the uh, pull cable. So extremely extensive hardware pack. Uh, you also get a roll of gap seal. This is not applied, so this is optional. If you want to put gap seal on, you can you can put it on yourself. And moving on, we have the tails. Um, tails and the wing come with. Um, covers or bags I really try not to give any um, bullshit reviews or, or blow smoke about some of the products we carry you know if I like something I'll tell you I like it if I don't like something I'll tell you I don't like it um, but the Fireblade is definitely my favorite F3K model um, for a variety of reasons um, first and foremost is that the quality, fit, and finish of this model is, in my opinion, the best I've ever seen, the best I've ever come across. Um, it's a solid core wing, and the finish on the wing is just super glossy and smooth. It has very little orange peel or surface distortions that you would commonly see on a lot of other solid core hand launch models. Um... And for your money, you get a lot of prefabrication, and you get a lot of uh, hardware. Uh, you get ballast, the bags. You get a model that goes together really quickly and flies very well. It might not be the latest and greatest in design as far as having a high aspect ratio wing and some like quick release linkages and things like that, but it's just a fantastic airplane. Um, and again, the quality just it all the quality of these planes always blow me away when I see them. So here's the wing I've been showing you guys. We'll flip it over. Take a look at the bottom. This is the standard C30 uh, layup. This wing weighs a hundred grams. Get a close look at the bottom. Um, here is where the uh, brass torque rods go for the um, ailerons. It also has wood hard points uh, in the wing for the mounting screws. Little fairing up front, that's a separate piece that's glued on at the factory. Okay, so this wing is straight out of the crate. Uh, I haven't touched it, it's a brand new kit. It's for sale on my site. This is the throw peg that comes with it. Um, it's a really nice throw peg. Very high quality. Pre-scuffed for bonding. This is the way the wingtip comes. It's already notched and it's already slotted for this throw peg. So if I could, I'll show you how, how easy is this. You just put some glue on this and push it in. And there it is. Literally no work. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. There's recessed channels for the gap seal in the wing if you choose to apply it. We'll move on to uh, the fuse and uh, the tails. 
these are the tails for the Fireblade 2. Um, and as you can see, the springs are factory installed. I mean, this right here, I hate putting springs in. This saves you so much time and trouble. Uh, it just makes the model go together so much quicker. That's one thing that I really love about this kit. Um, you can see two springs in the elevator. Um, it's scuffed here already for the control horn to be bonded on. And in the rudder, we also have two springs. And again, the rudder is scuffed for the control horn to be bonded on. Now, if you want a left-hand throw model, you have to order one because it, you can't flip this rudder around. So you do need to order a left-hand specific model if you are a left-handed thrower. Again, finish is fantastic. Holes are already pre-drilled. They have hard points. Um, the attachment for the rudder is like a hex shape. I don't know if you can see. So it, it just keys keys onto the fuselage, so it makes alignment and gluing much easier. Uh, both these parts weigh seven grams, so we had a hundred gram wing and uh, seven grams each for the uh, tails with the springs installed. All right, moving on to the fuselage. Um, Finish quality is fantastic on this fuselage. Here's the tail. Slot for the elevator horns already done. Um, it's got an exit installed for the rudder cable. Uh, the pylon is a separate piece that's glued on, but it's glued on at the factory so then the alignment is, is correct. And nylon screws for the elevator. This is the hex socket that plugs into the rudder. What I really like about these fire blades is they have a like metallic flaky clear coat so they kind of sparkle in the sun and just makes them look that much better. This is um, the clearance holes for the torque rods and push rods on the ailerons. Moving to the front we have um, the ballast setup. So you have adjustable positioning here for your CG. Um, the slot in here which you insert the ballast uh, stick and the ballast tube is pre-installed I think you see it there through these holes that's already glued in so you don't you don't even have to worry about doing that the nose is Kevlar and 2.4 friendly and this is the molded carbon uh, servo tray for the uh, servos. You can see it's got a little bit of a bend down in it and it makes it easier to install your servos because you can pre-position everything on this and then you simply insert that into the fuselage and and glue it down. I'm going to show you my personal model so you can get an idea of how the uh, arrangement goes. Um, nose cone a little bit of carbon reinforcement at the back of the nose cone. So there's a look at the fuselage. Let's have a look at the weight of this fuselage here. Forty three grams with the screws for the fuse, the tail, servo tray, ballast tube, and uh, nose cone. Okay, so why do I call this a two and a half? Uh, there was already a version two. Um, I have the older style fuselage here, which the version two was basically the solid core model. Um, it had uh, more precise uh, and better finished wing molds. So, which resulted in, in, in a, um, a better flying and better looking wing. But it had the uh, original fuselage design, which is this one here. And this is the two and a half fuselage. And obviously it's the four and the pod version. So it's slightly wider in cross section at the nose. It's shorter, so the nose moment from the leading edge of the wing to the nose is shorter than the old design. Scanning back, you can see the boom is thinner. And then when we get to the tail and the pylon, you can see that the 
the um, tail moment is also longer as well. You can see the elevator position is further back than the than the old version. So that's why I call it the two and a half, basically because of the uh, changes in the fuselage design. Okay, so this is my personal Fireblade 2.5. Um, I picked this up while I was visiting uh, GCM models in Poland. Um, actually helped out uh, making this model. Um, I watched it being made from start to finish, from cutting the materials to laying up the molds and the post curing and everything. And it was just a really fun time to be over there and hang out with, with those guys and see how they do things. Um, this has been flying since the summer and the finish is just as good as the day I got it. And that's because these guys at GCM, they have a really intense post-cure process. Um, they lay up the mold, clamp the molds together, the aluminum molds, and then they slowly heat up the mold to an extremely high temperature, and then slowly decrease the temperature of the mold, and then let it sit in the mold for a day before they remove it, or they demold the wing. And I think those elevated temperatures and the length of the post curing really um, contribute to keeping the surface finish of the wing looking good for a long period of time. As you can see, my wing is still perfectly smooth and shiny and free from, um, you know, any orange peel or um, fading or anything like that. Uh, this airplane is the sa is standard C30 layup and it weighs 238 grams ready to fly. And I'll just give you a close look at some of the components and the layout of the uh, servos and the nose. So this is how I did my um, servos, how I installed my servos. I have four Bluebird A10 servos. Um, these are the carbon push rods going to the aileron torque rods. Um, they're attached with ball links at the servos. The servos are just shrink wrapped and glued to that carbon plate. And again, I glued the servos on the plate before I installed the plate. So there's one, two, three, four servos. I have a single cell uh, 500 milliamp battery on top of the last servo. And then I have a re my receiver and um, Zepsis magnetic switch up here in the nose. All these components and hardware and even the shrink tube for the servos is what came with the kit. Uh, here's the pull spring with the supplied crimps. And again, these ball links and everything are supplied with the kit. And if you choose to remove the wing for transportation, generally I keep my wing on. But if you want to remove the wing, you have to unsnap these ball links and unbolt the wing and then slide the wing off from the back. And you're going to have your carbon push rods um, basically hanging free attached to the wing and you you could also uh, snap them off the ball links at the torque rods too if you want to remove them completely for transportation purposes these ball links are very easy to remove so again there's no like quick connect feature here but it, it is very very, very um, easy and straightforward to remove the wing uh, if you have to all right, let's have a look at the tail of my Fireblade. Um, it's the carbon rudder control horn that's supplied with the kit. Pull spring supplied with the kit and the crimp. Uh, this is the self-jigging hex uh, system to install the rudder. Um, it does still have a little bit of play in it, so it's always a good idea to put your model upside down on the work on a big flat surface or your workbench um, and use a T-square to make sure that the vertical is perfectly uh, square before you um, glue it on. Um, if you were just to push it on and glue it, you'd be you'd be accurate within a couple of degrees each way. But if you want to be super precise, uh, use the upside down method on your workbench. Uh, just a couple of drops of CA on that hex is all that's needed to install the uh, vertical elevator here. And there's the. Uh, control horn for the elevator going into that slot we get the pylon for the elevator which is pre-installed moving along the boom it's got really nice finish you know most modern f3k plans are between seven and nine hundred dollars now and 
you know, a lot of times you'll spend 800 bucks on a model and you'll get parts that won't fit together very well and you have bad uh, rough finish on the wings and things like that. You won't get wing bags or ballast, you know. So with this kit, for the money, you get awesome fitting parts, super easy build, awesome surface finish on the wing and all the parts, um, long-lasting high-quality surface finish, and you get the wing bags and the ballast. Uh, yeah, to me, this is just the best value for money on the market right now. I think GCM, those guys do just an amazing job with the quality of their models. Big double, triple thumbs up uh, for the Fireblade 2.5. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, give me a like if you like it or a thumbs down if you, if you don't like it. You won't hurt my feelings. And uh, yeah, subscribe to Flight Comp if you want to see some more videos like this in the future. Alright guys, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one.